Hey. hey, welcome out to channel14.com's Bodega Nights. I'm Joe. This is Norm. And this is Martin. And on this episode, we're not releasing on Wednesday because Captain America, we watched it over the weekend. And uh, we wanted to talk about it, I guess. So the way this is going to work is the first, I don't know, maybe five, ten minutes, we have spoiler-free first impressions kind of thing. And then after that, all bets are off and we go for like amazing spoilerific goodness. But for now, uh, Norm, what did you think of the movie? It was, ooh, it was, um, I had fun. I had a lot of fun. It was significantly more enjoyable than the others. And spoiler free, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what do you mean significantly more enjoyable than the others? Like, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, all right, spoiler free, um, the action was significantly better because it's uh, easier to watch cinematography wise. Um, so, like, um, you're you're making reference to Winter Soldier. Like, it's better than Winter Soldier, or more fun. What was it you said? It was more fun than definitely Avengers two. Well, uh, that's not setting the bar mm, very high okay. <laughs> in so far as Marvel Cinematic Universe <laughs> movies go. But mm, yeah, <laughs> I'll yeah, that's, it. That's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it was more fun than that, definitely. Uh, the action was easier to follow, so I could very much... Uh, I guess you could say the mashups were given more time. Like, you, you in Avengers 1, they, were, they would team up, but they were like split second. You, you see two, three seconds of Cap and Thor hammering it out and while they're surrounded by bad guys. And in this one, there's a longer sequence of action uh, when they're working together. So that's great. Right, like you get to see them work as a team because they've been a team for... Longer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when did the first Avengers film come out? 2012? They've been a team for like four years now. Yeah. yeah. So they better but be good. I, <laughs> but adding to Norm's uh, opinion there, we have to remember, well, going from Avengers 2, right? Age of Ultron. Mm-hmm. This is a whole new Avengers team. Uh, Caps, uh, Caps leading the team. Black Widow's there. They're the only two original uh, Avengers. These are newcomers. You know, Scarlet Witch, um, Sam Wilson, the Falcon, and even, you know, Vision. Even though he's Jarvis, now he's Vision. Um, so I like the new team who quickly gelled into team dynamics here in this movie. I guess that's what you're talking about? Or uh, uh, that's how I see it. Yeah, okay, sure. Um in, in other words, we're very wrong because... Well, in other words, I'm oh. very wrong because this isn't the Avengers team from 2012. That- and... Yeah. And they quickly gelled. Um, I don't know. Is it because the lack of egos without Iron Man, without <laughs> Thor, without a very, very angry ge- right, green right, man? Right. I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. Well, caveat... Uh, to Avengers, which one is it? Were you comparing to two or one? Um, basically, like, yeah, one and two, the progression of the team. Right. One, in one, they had absolutely no training, right? They just decided, That's all right, true. let's work together. So that explains the very brief action scenes where they're, they're not really, mm-hmm. uh, working as a team. In two, you have an entire battle sequence where they're assaulting one fortress. So I guess that's one entirely large mashup where they're coordinating yeah. their attack and whatnot. Uh, in this one, you have a new team, so it's not something I can talk about without spoiling anything else. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so far, this is non-spoilers, guy, guys, because we were just talking about the previous, yeah. uh, you know, movies. I mean, we'll go spoilerific everything in the 10 you, um, Because everything we're talking about out on the trailers anyway, like... That's you know, right. Yeah. You, know who's, you, you know who's where. But um, I guess showing the teamwork just highlights Captain America's ability as a mm, leader. A leader, yeah. As a battlefield commander or whatever like that, whatever the position is, you know. As a captain. <laughs> captain. Captain. <laughs> well, yeah, I like that. Uh, you like yeah, what? It's in the trailers too. Uh, basically, that new team... Mission. We won't talk about it yet. Now, <laughs> like, but um, it was awesome. It was awesome. Was it? Like, I, I was, I was really happy to see. Uh, I was really happy to see Ant Man there. 
Uh, yes. Because, oh yeah. Like because next yeah. to um, next to uh, that Winter guy. Winter Soldier. Next to Captain yes. America's Winter <laughs> Soldier movie, my second like favorite in this list of Marvel movies is Ant Man. Ant-Man, right. It's so, amazing. I love right. it. Uh, so like it, it was, was fantastic. So it was um it was great to see Scott Lang doing the Ant Man thing. Mm-hmm. Um. Black Panther is just amazing. Yes, like agree. Like so amazing. That was so right, like, very well done. <laughs> like I was with one of my, uh, I was with one of my law school buddies watching the film, and there's that one scene where, uh, where it, Black whoa, Panther whoa, whoa. is being kind of sneaky, and so he goes, do 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 do, and like, <laughs> <laughs> Pink Panther. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like the, the people in the row just started laughing <laughs> like oh no <laughs> we made other people in the cinema all laugh <laughs> and uh, uh spider-man the best spider-man on film i think way better than spider douche oh i mean yeah andrew i like yeah. um the ant-man movies humor i really really love it um uh, I can see some of the parts where um, Edgar Wright had a part in it, and unfortunately he left. But there are some traces of Edgar Wright's direction Aww. in there. Um, I wish there was more Arth- more. I uh, know what's his name, uh, Arthur Pena. Is that it? The mm, Mexican guy yeah. in Ant Man. Oh yeah, <laughs> and, and in this movie, that's about it. <laughs> Needs more of that guy. He better be back for the next Avengers film. Yeah, I know a guy who knows a guy. <laughs> who knows this guy? <laughs> who knows this girl? Who knows another girl? Who knows this girl? Who knows this guy? Yes, and that other girl? Who has that cousin? <laughs> With that cousin. <laughs> All right. So before we uh, before we leave the non spoilery section, uh, the, the the question that I had to folks that watch the movie is: It possible to enjoy this movie as a Captain America film? So like, if you if you watch Captain America one two. And three as like a standalone block. Will you appreciate this film? Mm, I think so. On on a yeah, on a as a standalone basis, you you can appreciate it. It's you might not appreciate all of it, but you definitely have all of the elements that make it a Captain America movie. Oh, actually, yeah. um, what what I meant was if if uh, if a kid is like a Captain America movie? fan. Mm-hmm. And all this kid watched was Captain America's one and two, without all of the other Avengers movies, without watching any of the other Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. Can that kid enjoy Captain America three? Right. I ha- actually, I think you're mm. you're starting to branch off into a topic I wanted to discuss before the spoilers, which is uh, criticism for the movie. It's hard because I know we all generally like the movie. Yeah. Yes. Right, um, and and you started off with, um, can a person who only watches Captain America, uh, like this movie on its own, uh, based on just exposure of Captain America? And I gotta say, it's a uh, probably not so much, because hmm. of all the other nods to all the other movies that Marvel made. Right. If you're not a fan of Spider-Man or you have no idea uh, about Scarlet Witch or um, War Machine and Iron Man. Um, you might not be able to uh, admire or appreciate the intensity of storytelling in this movie. All right. Yeah, I, I actually that, that that's an idea. That's something that I've been grappling with as well. Right? Like how how does this work as the end to a trilogy? Um, because that's supposedly what it is, right? The end of a trilogy. Yeah. This should have been this should have been the second Avengers movie. Yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah, same here. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. You gotta I admire the sudden change of tone, but I think we should start the spoiler section now because I can't. <laughs> Alright, All right, so uh, what is there uh Oh yeah, go ahead. No. Yes, no. Uh, you can't. Um, 
I like the story. Um, I will agree about the necessity of Avengers 2 though, because you gotta give the fans the middle ground of okay, they started as a team in Avengers 1. Now, how do they work as a team? That the happy go lucky good times rising crescendo thing in Avengers 2. Then you have the uh, kind of big. Uh, big bad or the big problem or climax in this one where it all kind of falls apart and whatnot. Yeah, you know, something that uh, what's it? The interesting thing about this film is that there really isn't a good villain. Like, yeah. Like, like, yeah, Baron Zemo is great but I don't know. Or not, not that there isn't a good villain, but like we didn't have a Loki. In a yeah, way. no, no, no. There was no Loki, definitely. Like yeah. the, like uh, both both Captain America and Iron Man are uh, protagonists and antagonists at the same time. I would think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I feel that because yeah, if they have a bigger villain, it's. They don't it's have not a, gonna be a civil war. Yeah. Oh, and um, and we're gonna be spoiling. Selection. But we're gonna be spoiling Batman versus Superman as well. We're gonna be spoiling okay. Dong of Justice because, like, it Dong. feels <laughs> <laughs> because it feels like there has to be a comparison here. Um, okay. And like, what I'm glad uh, Marvel didn't do was the thing where you have the fighting people get together because doomsday shows up like oh like there was no doomsday and in a weird way like baron zemo won that's true like the I, bad I like guy how he wins just, yeah <laughs> i just like how he just said his last two words did it <laughs> and that was it uh, it's the you know when he got captured yeah 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 oh thank god I thought you guys didn't watch that part <laughs> <laughs> he got captured <laughs> what with the awkward what? silence <laughs> no um uh, yeah I agree the total lack of a villain or, or rather a really really big bad that everybody's fighting is creates a vacuum in the movie because it's not your traditional action story movie where they're fighting a big bad right but it yeah. does create this huge space for all the drama to spill on to. Right, like it works extremely well. Yeah, because all the storytelling time that goes into who is this villain, what's his MO or whatnot, has gone into, all right, what's uh, going on in between the lives of the Avengers? Who's doing what now? Uh, how's the world reacting to them? So that's, uh, I guess, world building has uh, taken up that space of who's the villain and who, what country is he destroying this time yeah Mm. uh there was something else that i wanted to bring up oh yeah i'm i'm i am so glad that nobody died (laughs) oh yeah i I, I was so scared they might go ahead martin i was so scared they're gonna kill off cat just like how they did in the comic books Okay, so some comic book elitists are gonna say, Meh, you didn't kill Cap. You're not faithful to the comic books. But I'm like, thank God. Because, come on, we might need Captain America for Infinity Wars, and we don't need a convoluted reason how he got resuscitated or back to life. All right, so, uh, like two- how the. Oh, good. No, that's it, that's it. All right, because there, uh, you touched on two things actually that I wanted to, that I wanted to mention. Uh, first off, the way the movie was sort of structured, I, I guess, or the, the way the, the cinematic universe is set up, and this is to the credit of Kevin Feige, if uh, Chris Evans didn't renew his contract past Captain America 3, they have a very easy out. Kill him during Civil War and have Bucky Barnes be Captain America. Easy. Um, so, yes, that's a thing, I think. And a uh, second point was, I think one of the big uh, problems of this movie mm-hmm. was that it was called Civil War. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not there yet. And I don't even see a Civil War. It's just, you know, two guys fighting and it's the beginning of the Civil War. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, um, it's like, 
uh, uh, because folks like AG will <laughs> dismiss. <laughs> hey, AG. Hey, man. Uh, folks hey, like man. AG will dismiss this film because it's the civil skirmish. Right? The people <laughs> that have their minds set on this fact that superhero movies are terrible and comics are better, blah, 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 blah will dismiss this outright because eh, it's not civil war it's the civil skirmish and that was the that, that was one of the big issues i think with this film because if you had come in having read civil war that's an additional like layer of your suspension of disbelief in a way like i i have to keep on reminding myself that even though this thing is called civil war we're not going to get freaking spider-man yeah. unmasking himself and stuff Dog agrees. Hey, Doug. Hey, yeah. Um, this Bodega Nights is featuring my and my neighbor's dogs. <laughs> Actually, so most cute. Bodega Nights with me in it <laughs> feature me and my neighbor's dogs. <laughs> yeah. They're just barking in agreement. Yep, yep. Um, yep. Anything... Wait, no. Uh, Aunt May, dude. Yes. Oh God! <laughs> I had such a weird reaction to Aunt May. Uh, Aunt Bay, <laughs> <laughs> those A's that you keep on seeing on yeah, screen yeah. don't stand for the Avengers; they stand for Aunt May. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, what do you what, what do you think of that though? What do you think um, of having Aunt May be like a lot younger? I think it make go no, Martin go go. Kind of makes sense because Spidey is a bit younger too. And in a way, if you're a fan of RDJ or Marissa Tomei, you'd know a certain movie they were in together. Ah, so yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That scene made it a bit more of a, you know, a cookie or an Easter egg. Right. For any movie buff. Right, but like, then, oh, no, oh, lol. <laughs> So yeah, what th- they did uh, there. But then to the point of it being like a younger Peter Parker, therefore we need a younger Aunt May. It seems kind of disproportionate or whatever. Like, um, how old is this particular hmm. Peter Parker supposed to be, right? Like, that's uh, true. The, the actor is about 19, I think, 18 or 19. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if he's playing a 16 year old Spider Man, um, by the time he gets to college or whatever, that's like four years away. And by the time that happens in the more traditional, like, Spider-Man universe, Aunt May is, like, decrepit already. That's true. Um, so, like, this is, uh, this is, like, it, it feels like it's, like, a reimagining of the Aunt May character, a la, um, a la Ultimate Universe style. Because we know that yeah. the MCU pulls from the Ultimate Universe. But, like, what do you think of that? I really don't think anything bad about that. That that's my point. It's like okay, Tony I Stark kind of put it in to... good words when he said it's a she's a ridiculously uh, good-looking aunt. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, this is not uh, the aunt May I grew up with. <laughs> yeah. Too. Um, I love it, how with Spider-Man they didn't brush or they, that, that they just brushed over his origin story. <laughs> Yes, like we we all know. After like three reboots, we all know. So let's just move on with our lives, right? Yeah, like we've come to that point in uh, we we've come to that point in sort of cinema or superhero movie superhero movies where you don't exactly need to give the origin story because of this interconnected universe thing. But that brings up another question: um, Does is, is is that good or bad for filmmaking? Wait, no, that that's a really loaded question. What do you think of that? <laughs> Where that's too deep. That's too deep. No, no, not, not too deep. It's not too deep. Yeah, dude. we need it's, bulk. It's a, we need. It's a it's it's a very leading it's a very leading question because I'm yeah. not sure that this is good for like film in general. Where you have expanded universes, therefore it's okay to have plot holes. Therefore it's okay oh. to sort of leave stuff. Um, mm. leave stuff out, yeah, because there's already a cultural zeitgeist. Like in effect, you're saying a film doesn't need to stand alone in order to be a film. Mm. And this is the fault of Marvel Studios. 
But at the same yes. time, I love the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. So, you it's, know, they're they're executing it very very well. Is is what they're doing? Not like the other guys. Um, not like the distinguished competition. Yeah, nah. Yes, the distinguished elitist competition. The disturbingly yeah. bad comedy movies. You, uh, right. So, so none of you. We will not call that name. Uh, you know, I. I yeah, yeah. I get yeah, nerd cred. Get, I get nerd get. cred. We, we got that. We we found what yeah, you were yeah. going for. Just yeah, no, so because that's there. what that's really what they call DC internally in Marvel. Uh, distinguished, distinguished competition. Distinguished competition. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, <laughs> we need to <laughs> verify on. that in APPC 2016. <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Um, yeah, moving um, on. Um, it seems to be so far the only thing. Uh, the monopoly of Marvel is that their uh, their storytelling is very tightly woven. Nobody else has been able to do it just yet, even though everybody's been trying. Um, the masterful work of what to leave out and what to include is definitely a strong point for every Marvel movie. That's why, I guess, we keep uh, watching them, even though we're not really big fans of... Let's say we're not big fans of Ant-Man or we're down to watch um, some other big Marvel superhero because he's got something to do with the rest of the universe and we want to know. Mm. Yeah. And they take into effect, they're really meta, I guess, with it because they took into effect that uh, we all know about Mara, Spider-Man and with how they had Tony Stark just glaze over the how'd you get your powers? What's the limit? Uh, type of thing. Uh, it's, you know that thing that happened, and now flip, yeah, flip. Was like, just, just. <laughs> you know? I don't want to talk about that. Can you help me? <laughs> uh, I love that part because yeah, right. Yeah. It's, it's it's great because it it's sort of it's very zeitgeisty. But then again, right? That's that's it, one of the questions that really can't be answered. Or maybe we should have Bach answer it when, like, the next time he comes on to a Bodega Nights. Yeah, agree. Yeah. Um, best Spider Man. Um, best cinematic Spider-Man. So yeah, <laughs> basically, uh, b- basically the question is better than Tobey Maguire. <laughs> uh, for me, it's better than Andrew Douchebag. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Andrew Garfield. Andrew Douchebag Garfield. <laughs> yeah, uh, for me, I can't say it's better than Toby because I can only say something than Toby. He's like a younger Toby. He mm. looks like a younger Toby to me. All right, is I it will- just me? I, I'll say he looks wise. He reflects some of the Tobey Maguire Spider Man. Yeah. Thankfully, he's not as whiny. He's just a great yes. balance in between Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire. Like he's it's a smart ass. He's a smart, smart ass, and, and a smart man. And he rolls with the punches. He doesn't, you know, break down and cry on at <laughs> on call, right? That's true. Like, MJ, don't oh, leave oh, me. <laughs> oh yeah, this is this is pre MJ, huh? This is pre MJ, yeah. This is pre MJ. So he's just a teenager now. Uh, he's just going through class. I love that he's like, I got homework, <laughs> <laughs> and he's not lying. He's like it's down. And he's like, ah, I can't believe this kid. We're talking about saving the universe, and you're talking you're talking about homework. <laughs> and like, I, I don't know. I got like. Um, I got I got goosebumps when they plastered like queens. It's like oh, this is it. <laughs> like, yep. Oh yeah. It's like oh. Here but we go. also, I don't know. I'm not really that familiar with Spider-Man Ultimate Universe. So me neither. What's the backstory on Uncle Ben then? Um. Still roughly the same. Yeah, roughly the same. <laughs> so. But, but like, I, I guess it doesn't really matter to this movie. Like, there, yeah, yeah. that's that's the thing. Yeah. That, Again, that's the question that we're going to uh, we're gonna have to grill Bok on the next time he comes on. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies to uh, the neighbors' dogs. They're very excitable today because we're talking about Captain America. Yes. Yeah, man. They're going to watch Civil War Even later. the dogs love Captain America. Ask them about America. BVS; they'll be silent. <laughs> Something that I like about this movie, which again, uh, Dong of Justice didn't do quite well. Uh, that well because like say um, if we're talking about this movie stacked up against uh, Dawn of Justice like Dawn of Justice is visually stunning it's like wow right mm. but then um, 
what what uh, Civil War lacks in visual stunningness, it makes up for in storytelling, in sort of uh, making making the fight scenes meaningful. Uh-huh. You know, because yeah. like that's that's the thing with action movies. Like the fight scenes have to be. How do you call it? The fight scenes have to have a purpose. Mm, yeah. Um, I remember the first fight scene you start off with. I remember their dialogue in between is um, when Captain America starts uh, running up the running up to the building and tells Scar- Scarlet Black Witch. Widow, Scar- Scarlet Witch, uh, just mm-hmm. like we practiced, right? So it's clearly they're not ready yet. They're not, yeah. not, they're not completely done training. And it gives you subtle hints on how well the progress is going. And it explains the inexperience of Scarlet Witch when she does a boo-boo and throws oh, the explosive God, guy yes. straight at the building. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they, they, they quote-unquote killed off Crossbones. Oh. Uh, <laughs> they didn't want How him. many people would be missing him? Hmm. Not much. Not much. Yeah. Not kind much. Of a dude. <laughs> yeah, he kind of looks kind of ugly. Great. He could have been like a great like villain. No. No. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> He's the equivalent no. of the Walking Dead. Let's walk around, guys. He's <laughs> the red shirt some episode, of some Star Trek. Walking. The... <laughs> hey, hey, want to see my face? No one asked you to take off your mask, Crossbones. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but, then, like, uh, but then what I was Fine, talking I- about though uh, was the like with with action movies, the fight scenes have to be for a plausible reason. Like oh. the reason that people are fighting oh, yeah. has to be plausible, and the reason people stop fighting has to be plausible. Oh yeah, not right. because my mom's name was Martha. <laughs> we stopped we're not, fighting. We're not- we're not. We're not. <laughs> oh my god! Um, like, yeah, like I, the I, I, reason I, I, oh, they stop oh. fighting at the end is because Captain America pretty much put his shield through Iron Man's heart. Oh, oh! It's like he put his word. dad's work right into his heart. Anyway, what a yeah. dick! <laughs> I, I like it. I like. It. I, I get where you're dad. going. And this was raised by one of our friends. On Facebook, I guess. Yeah? Joem, I think. Earlier today. Yeah, the... Anyway. Yeah. Oh, all that's the fight such a Joem thing to say. Yeah. All the fight <laughs> scenes have heavy, clear motivation, is what he was saying. And... It's true. Let's see. For example, the fight scene at the airport, where you have these cute moments in between when friends are fighting friends, and you can... And they're having this dialogue, like, we're still friends, right? Yeah. And yeah. Wanda Maximoff throws... Black Widow across the, the tarmac <laughs> and says, stop pulling your punches to Hawkeye, right? And yeah. uh, Wanda apologizes to Vision when she takes over his body. Um, because clearly, you can see that there's conflict when they're fighting. They're fighting over ideals, not because their friendship is over. They very much want to still be friends, but it's there's the, the divide is breaking them apart. And Lisa. Y- yeah, you can see them... <sighs> Most of the movie, you can see them trying to talk about it and reason with each other, and it it it's kind of understandable when your greatest powers are for fighting. So that's what you end up with. Another yeah. uh, another zeitgeisty thing that uh, I'm I'm not sure if like they timed it such that uh, this film comes out during an election year in the U.S. and well, an yeah. election year for us. But it serves as this really cool thinly veiled metaphor for um, political agendas. How public policy can cause people to hate each other mm. around around this sort of time. I don't know. Yeah. It, it just felt like a oh, mm. I see people unfriending each other on Facebook because they yes. support so and so candidate. <laughs> it's a civil oh. war. <laughs> oh, I'm for this guy. I'm for that guy. <laughs> civil war. <laughs> Yeah, it is. So um, yeah, I don't you know. Make that what, what did you guys? <laughs> what did you guys think of the ending? What, were you were you guys satisfied by the ending? Um, the after credits I like, and the mid credits I like. <laughs> the ending is like, hmm. 
So the because I didn't see Cap with the shield, so that means obviously he left it with Tony Stark, right? Yeah, but then uh, again, problem with Marvel films, they rely on open, the meta. Oh, um, open ended. <laughs> it's not that open ended. Um, yeah, like they. There's they, no clear direction yet on where Captain America's uh, next story is gonna take. Is the thing that's lacking in the ending is what I'm going for. Uh, so far, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, um, to, to to Martin's question again, they rely quite heavily on the sort of yeah. meta uh, and and sort of knowledge of geek kind of culture yeah. because we see that um, we see that Captain America and friends are hanging out in Wakanda mm. right waka, and waka, eh, eh. Waka, Wakanda right and waka, we know waka, that waka. Wakanda has vibranium yep vibranium and we know that at one point Captain America has a vibranium shield Mm. Yeah, but he's always had a vibranium shield in the MCU. Well, yeah, fine, um, but like we we know that after leaving his shield, and this isn't this isn't in the film itself, but this is sort of how I think Marvel wants um, the more quote unquote educated, like pop culture educated audience goers to sort of have in mind is you fill in that gap by saying. Um, so they're hanging out mm. in Wakanda. Captain America needs a shield. Ask the mm. Black Panther. <laughs> right? Like, that's sort of, I, I think, what Marvel was trying to have as, like, a, a sort of, okay, fans, you can fill in the gap. And for everybody else, well, it doesn't really matter, you know? Yeah. Yes. Well, the, the underlying X, the underlying subtext is they're going to try to find Bucky. Iron Man's going to be on the hunt to kill Bucky, right? Yes, because of what he did to his parents. It well, is fine his to mom. talk about because it's a spoiler section of the podcast. Yeah. Oh, guys, is it okay for me to share a Facebook post of a friend? Because it is spoilerific, even right. though he says it's not spoilers. Shout outs yeah. to you if you still think it's not spoilers. Anyway, uh, Tony didn't deserve any of that. Didn't effing deserve that. F you, Stephen Bucky. Hope you realize how big of an a hole you guys are considering you're enjoying yourselves every night. What was inside? my mind when I finished the movie. Like, this was after... <laughs> Stark 2016. <laughs> yeah, Stark 2016. <laughs> Never forget, Team Iron Man. <laughs> For me, how did that scene, like, you know, the revelation that it was that guy... What's your reaction to that well, when well, you yeah. found that out? Was it justified for Iron Man to just go all out, kick some ass, and then... Okay, you know. so, right, so, right, so Martin, right. you're trying not to be spoilery, right? It, it feels like you're trying not to be spoilery. So the question is, there is a scene where we find out that Tony Stark's parents didn't die in were a plane killed. crash or whatever, but were actually were killed. killed by Bucky Barnes. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Uh, it felt, it felt a lot like Chekhov's gun for me, right? Like, uh, you have this footage right at the beginning where you have, that operation where he crashes a car, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And you have like a lot of stuff that's purposely sort of, you, you can tell from the way that it's shot, they really are leaving a whole lot out. And yep. through the film, you kind of know that um, whoever was in that car is going to be a lot more important than the scene, quote unquote, tries to make you believe. Mm -hmm. simply because of the way that it was shot and they, they they didn't have the reverse angle for example so there um, so you had to know that something was going to come of that footage uh, and in that way it didn't feel like it was shoehorned in which is good and I guess it's justifiable again like you need like motivation for your characters to get into a big fight scene and i think that serves as good enough motivation on the part of tony stark right because captain america who was supposed to be his buddy uh was he, keeping this from him and here's the guy that killed your parents so like i think it works really well mm -hmm. uh norm sorry what was the question was it justifiable <laughs> for Tony Stark to not hear Captain's reasons for you know right, keeping so, it from him? All right, um, in, instead I of have, like, I have, I have, like so knee-jerk reaction to kick their asses. 
But uh, guys, just go ahead. I'll be right, right back. Right. Um, caveat to Jao and, and disclaimer for everybody else out there. I tend to speak with what sounds like more passion than I actually have knowledge of. So disclaimer out. Um, mm-hmm. My thing with that is, and I, I, I guess this is uh, the very summary of my thoughts on that is I'm waiting for the next ensemble Marvel movie to bank itself on storytelling that is not founded upon Tony Stark's faults. Mm. Right? Because, all right, uh, in this one, uh, all right, in the, in the last Avengers, Tony Stark was the futurist. Um, and, and I guess it's, it's a huge thing. It's in the whole general Marvel universe. It's a huge thing. He's a futurist. And he's got huge flaws. That's the problem with him there and it's it's easy to pick at and use as the center of the storytelling because he's got a huge ego in it and it helps him become the center of attention or the leader sort of of the group uh, not just because he's financing everything but you know hey um all right avengers 2 he sees a future where all of his friends die and they fail saving the earth therefore he's so afraid he created the ultron system yes Yes. Yes. That drives him there. It's the, the entirety of Avengers 2 is based on Tony Stark's faults. Civil War, same thing. The driver for um, most of the storytelling here hinges on the fact that Tony Stark is uh, afraid of losing his teammates or afraid of whatever uh, his flaws were. Uh, therefore, help um, pushing him to actually try to talk his teammates into signing the superhero signage uh, blah 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 the, the Wakanda <laughs> Sokovia Accords the Wakanda Sokovia Accords the Sokovia Accords Registration not, Act the, the SRA not in the Wakanda the Sokovia Accords um, so the Sokovia Accords and later on when he gets over that we, 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 get, we go beyond that into the storytelling it's another hinge on his flaws when he can't get over himself uh and his ego won't let him listen to Captain America when he says that it's not Bucky's fault, right? Yeah, he got brainwashed. He's, yeah, he got brainwashed, which makes him a victim. It's horrible, I understand, but hey, the Wakandan prince was able to get over that. But that's because he was able He's... to constantly swallow his ego. Like earlier, just literally moments before or moments during when he said, you know, uh, I will not ven- I will not let vengeance uh, consume, consume me you. as it consumes them. <laughs> so <laughs> I guess like, my, my long rambling rant is, I am waiting for Marvel to not bank on uh, Tony Stark as the uh, catalyst for conflict in the next Marvel movies. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be. Yeah. Well, that's going to be a bunch of little stones. That's what's going to be like <laughs> bringing about <laughs> your big conflict. Um, wait, yeah. Uh, j- just another, like another question: um, Is Captain America supposed to be the protagonist in this film? And, and this is going back to the Facebook post of Martin's friend, where it's hashtag Team Iron Man. Um, like after seeing this film, are you supposed to be, or during this film, are you supposed to be rooting for Captain America in the same way that you were in the comics? Um, no, actually, because the one that Cap, I don't know, it, maybe it's in the situation because in the comic books, and uh, we can link it, we can link the Wikipedia page of the Civil War comic books tonight or something. It's they. The crux of the relationship between Cap and Iron Man still hinged on the Registration Act to two different settings. Um, the Sokovian Accords is basically the Accords because of what happened in Sokovian Avengers 2, right? Yeah. And yeah. in yeah. the Superhero Registration Act, it's the response to what happened in Civil War Number 1 where what happened in Connecticut which killed a lot of people, including 60 school kids who, you know, who had the brunt of the explosion of Nitro when Namorita, like, rammed him to that school bus, you know? Wait, when sorry, um, to cut, sorry, sorry to cut you off, I just realized, um, we're not, in, in my rant, we're not talking about Robert Downey as a human being because 
Yeah, yeah. We're talking about Tony Stark. Yeah, I mean, like, Tony Stark is I a human that. being. We're treating him like a superhero with who's supposed to be with, perfect, yeah. I guess. Yes. And it just yeah. so happens that the things that push him over the edge are a culmination of tiny little things that have yeah. been bugging him for the longest time. Yeah. Mm. And this is what I love. Uh, that's what I loved about Civil War movie. Like, at the start of the movie, he like does the virtual reality glasses thing that simulated his last moments with his parents, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. then you go to the end, and he finally finds out how they really died. And it goes back to his line there, like, no matter how many millions of dollars I spent, that's I cannot, you know, change redo, the past. Yeah, change the past. And and that's the payoff. That's the end. That's the payoff there. When he finally found out who killed him. He can't change the past, true, but okay, I think I can like, you know, vent out a little and beat the hell out of these two guys who's been well, keeping this secret from me. So, In a way. So, that's how maybe that's part of his psyche, but we're going back to I'm sorry if I strayed to my answer. Let's go back to yeah. We compare this to the comic books, right? That was um, a question. Well not not so much comparing it to the comic books, but um, are you supposed to be rooting for Team Cap by oh. the end of this movie? For me, um, no. You can still root for it's, any team. It's just it's, it's, it's not this. E- it's not <laughs> uneven for me. But th- I can go Iron Man or Team Cap for different reasons. Norm. All right. Um, it's equal movies about Captain America and his undying loyalty to his friends. Mm-hmm. For example, Bucky, despite having been so lost, is still Cap's friend, and by that simple definition, he will die saving Bucky, and that's admirable. Mm-hmm. And in a, in as much as it kind of hurts him to destroy his friendship with Tony Stark, he has to save Bucky because Bucky is more lost than Tony. On the other side, it's also a movie that is as much about Tony Stark as it is about Captain America and Stark grappling with. Um, everything in his life and what having so many resources at your fingertips gives you, I guess. It yeah. lightly breathes on that. Um, but is it a movie that could be, that's definitely pushing you to Team Cap or Team Iron Man? No, it's, I think it's fairly divided in between. You'll definitely have people on, on both sides. Okay. Mm. More a, li- a little bit more on Steve Rogers because you know, I guess seems yeah, like, like the right I, thing. Yeah, because I was I was actually thinking that um, they kind of should. Well, it it feels like they were trying to put you on the side of Captain America because Thunderbolt Ross is a bit of an ass in this film, and <laughs> he's. <laughs> he's always an ass. He's in not any a little film. bit of an ass. He is an he's ass, always, right? Yeah, and so like. <laughs> That, you're supposed to be given. rooting against him, and by extension, you're rooting against Iron Man. Like it's 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 weird, right? Because um, the way I the, the way I see it on the, the I think the way they they quote unquote balanced it out was you're supposed to be um, you're supposed to be your your mind is supposed to be on the side of Tony Stark, but your heart is supposed to be with Iron uh, is supposed to be with Captain America. Hmm, that's a good that's a good analysis. Like I think that's how they were able to balance it out in a way. Yeah, it's a good part too. But you can still side with Captain. Oh, I'm sorry, with Iron Man through you know using your heart because here's a guy who's trying to say, "Come on, guys, let's just sign this. Let's not divide this team." I, I mean, I know it sucks. This is like, I think Black Widow said it, it's the path of least resistance, signing the Sokovian Accords. And he, it's like he's a man trying to grasp everything to work together, but no matter how hard he tries, and he's it happens here. Yeah, he's just a man, and <laughs> everything still he goes to... Yeah, <laughs> it, it still goes south. Listen to because, Radio Norm, people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's just a man. Oh, no, Channel no, matter how, <laughs> no matter how much money he has, no matter how much tech he has, he still can't get the parts of his life that matters together. His family life, his relationship with Pepper, and now his relationship with Steve and the other Avengers. And that's the crux of it. That's how his, you feel his, so bad for him. Even, even in the comics, to be the bad cop. 
and he has to align with Ross even though he hates the guy but he knows he has to do it because he wants to keep the team together sadly it's not gonna happen because yeah that's what sucks for Tony speaking of stuff that sucks for Tony for Tony uh, or for stuff everything that sucks in general <laughs> um <laughs> in general Captain America and Agent 13 yo like what's up uh, with that who's oh, Agent 13 yes um you know that uh, what's her uh, name oh wait yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, Sharon uh, Carter Emily um, Emily Von Trump Von Trump blonde chick yes yeah. uh, Sharon, Car- Sharon Carter I love that you scene know. oh my god the entire Beatles scene I loved it it's so bro <laughs> wait uh sorry <laughs> The, the, the entire uh, scene with technical difficulties there, my microphone little, and all that doggy difficulties on my end. Uh, um, I love yeah, the entire yeah. scene with the the Beatles, where Captain America drives up and you know she's like, "That's not exactly a getaway vehicle," and he says, uh, "I'm keeping it low key." <laughs> low key. He's huge low guys, key. right? He's got uh, what's his name, Bucky in the back and. Hawkeye, no, 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 not Hawkeye. Falcon in the front, passenger seat, and they're all kind of squished together and they're uh, asking each other to scooch over and, and there's no space. It's amazing. And yeah. the kiss happens and you get the bro nod of approval and it's, it's so great. And it's, you're, you're reminded that they're actually friends. They're not team, they're not, they're not just teammates, they're friends, family, you know. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Steve Rogers. Kissing Peggy Carter's niece. <laughs> oh, <laughs> great Steve, niece. Great niece. Why? Yeah, just because Peggy died, Steve? Really, Steve? That's all I can say. Uh, right after the funeral, uh, too. It's, uh, yeah, right after. I don't after. know, man. A little too soon. Yeah. I don't know, man. Uh, I think that in the years that have passed between him finally meeting Peggy again and working with the Avengers, I think what they haven't glazed on is the fact that it may, may be the fact that Steve Rogers has finally <laughs> moved on from Peggy. I mean, he's the great what if, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I nice mean, selection Captain... though, Steve. Wink, wink. <laughs> nudge, nudge. The great what Such if I haven't job, fallen into Steve. the ice and fallen asleep for 50 years. <laughs> this, uh, going back to like the tragedy that, that, that is the life of Iron Man or the life of Tony Stark... Um, Steve Rogers, man. Like, the, the whole man out of time thing. Mm-hmm. There were two mm-hmm. people in the current Marvel Cinematic Universe that, uh, were contemporaries with Steve Rogers. One of them died and the other one, uh, put himself back into, like, cryogenic whatever All because right, of. Yeah. Yes. Reasons. That, that that felt like um that that was like a one of the one of the themes that was running through well most of Captain America's movies. Man out of time. Yeah, man out of time, and um, you know he 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 finds somebody that he knew from back in the day. She's dying. Like you, uh, he finds another uh, another dude who was his best friend. Uh, yeah, best friend from back in the day, and. He's brainwashed. Oh wow! <laughs> so that oh, that no. um that 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 mid credit scene, like, wow, that's it was strong. Like, ah. like ah. the only other person that was there when you were doing your thing in World War Two, like, who can, ah. who can get my 1940s jokes? Uh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, now that you pointed out, sorry for the huge spike in audio. Now that you pointed out, that is really horrible. I mean, it sucks in general and specifically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly. Uh, it really, really does suck because now Tony, uh, Tony, um, Steve is alone for the, for all intents and purposes. He doesn't have his friend, Tony. Um, his other best friend from his other time traveling best friend is back in ice and oh. He's lost his creds as Captain America, so now he has no identity. So that's... I'm looking forward to the next Captain America movie. Is there going to be another Captain America movie? I think yes, this is the last in the trilogy. Is it a trilogy? I don't wow. know. How many did he sign? Yeah. For, and, up for? I mean, like, they have, movies, they have movies planned up to, like, 
freaking 2020 and this is and i think this is the last captain america movie we have until that, then that 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 makes sense i guess cuz they didn't really uh actually no yeah they didn't say captain america will return they said spider-man will return Ooh. Yay. right but because I mean, oh. because like if you look at the if you look at the list of marvel Cin- uh, mcu movies like there is no more captain america movie so this is supposed to be this is supposed to cap the Captain America trilogy, and that's why I was asking about the ending. Um, is this a good ending for Captain America? Hmm. And that's yeah, um, and and that's and that and then that also goes to the question about uh, about movies being part of an expanded universe, and is it okay that we end the Captain America trilogy? With this thing that has questions, which will be answered in a 